Okay, we're going to use this medium now to show you how to use Inventor probably in the way it'll be used as much as anything else as that's going from a true sketch, not an AutoCAD sketch block, but a true sketch into Inventor by bringing in actually a drawing. I'm going to point out this is a problem that should look familiar to you. One problem with Google Docs is that if you can't do an easy cut paste, so I used a print screen, put this in a JPEG before I brought it in. And I'm not going to keep the... Um, necessarily keep the units right because I just want to show you the process here but the factor of how you get something up to scale is pretty easy in this program so I'm going to go new I'm going to go to a metric one to see if I can do a metric part and actually keep it to true scale standard in millimeters that's fine a standard part in millimeters remember there are a thousand millimeters in a meter a thousand millimeters in a meter so I'll be really curious whether this thing takes something that's in the order of meters and takes it up. So, all right, I've got here and I've got a part, right? If you remember, you're in a sketch mode, you could bring in a drawing. You're going to see bringing in a set of points from Excel is going to be really, really important, interesting, and neat. Um, and I can also insert an image. I've gone out and I said I've made a JPEG of that image already by doing a control print screen, editing it down in, the, in a paint and making it a JPEG. I'm going to hit open here. That drawing will come in at some arbitrary scale. It's a great idea to bring it. It did not allow me to do it this time, so yes. Uh, interesting. This time it did not work, so I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay, it did work. All right, a little problem with registering the thing. All right, I've got here now. You remember, you bring something in, and then you can dimension it. I'm just going to guess because I don't want to go through the process. I guess I I would like to go through the process of actually, I guess, drawing a line. I guess I can do that. That's not so hard. And I remember the meters here. I'm going to draw a line over the top of that. All right. And if you noticed, right click, done, and now I can dimension that line, and that's 18. So if I call that 20 long, right, 20, I'm going to call it 18. I'm going to call it 20 for now because I don't have a calculator. But in other words, I've got a scale of 20 on this equals 10 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And I'm going to dimension this now with the dimension tool. And that means this is, what, 80 meters? 80 meters so now I can which is let's see if it'll take that 80 meters is 80 1 2 3 let's see if it takes that in your sketch and it does so I've now put that pretty much the scale the forces will be something else entirely it'll be something else entirely so you've got a sketch here it's the scale realized you're going to have to deal with the Newton separately because you have two scales on here one is the scale for the geometry and one is the scale for the object. So I'm going to take this all the way through now pretty quickly. You know that you can draft. Eventually you would end up stick your dimensions back on or off your drawing. I don't have dimensions on. This is purely scaled and purely it was to have you calculate graphically and this is what you're going to see. Graphically is by hand quick and then pretty exact by this. Going all the way through, closing it up, right click done. Now I'm going to say that was that, that large. I'm going to make it a meter thick. I'm going to make it a meter thick. I'm going to do that by finishing. Right click. Finishing the sketch. Hitting F6 for home. Going ahead to the extrude and pushing this out 1,000 millimeters. Right. I'm going to go ahead and push that out. Grab the profile. And there it is. Now it's a thousand millimeters, and you're kind of done with the, the, the design on it. As we've looked at before, I'm now going to add two holes to this, even though there's one. If I'm going to be doing stress analysis, it needs to be have the right number of degrees of freedom. When you start doing dynamic, you could put one hole here and watch how the gravity works. And you can look to sketchy physics and later to this as we get into the potential for just looking into how seismic loads work in lieu of what happened in Illinois yesterday. All right, so we've got here. Now we can go ahead. Remember, we can put our hole there. I'll put a larger hole this time. You do the hole. You grab the face. You're going to go through the whole thing for now, through all. You're going to make this hole not 25 millimeter. That would be kind of big. Let's make it 
500 millimeter. 500 millimeter hold, grab the face, and then I can of course grab a reference here, and we're going to make that maybe five, I'm sorry, three meters by double clicking on this. I'm sorry, to finish out, you have to finish out your two dimensions, right? And I'm going to go ahead and then double click on them. See linear face face five thousand through all. Go back here in a second and see why it's not grabbing what I want. Through all distance, through all five hundred millimeters. It's not wanting to do that. So I'm going to try it again here. I'm going to go back in here. And hit the stop until I can, or the pause until I can get that hold. All right, this seems to be working. I think it might have been my computer there. So I'm going to make this three meters from one side, and you can start notating what these parameters are if you really want to be smart and kind of. Or you'll see there's going to be a way to look at them. I'm going to make this 3,000 millimeters as well. The hole is 500, and it's through. I hit OK. That's one hole. I'm going to place another hole here because it needs to be fully constrained. I'm going to hit pause there just so we have enough time to look at the stress analysis. I've got my hole about in. I've made them 3,000 each. I'm going to hit apply here and done. And of course, now let's remember we can always go back to parameters at some point in here. Tools, manage, parameters. And in this parameter, we see we have all those 3,000. So if we wanted to make actually this one equal to D5, that would be okay. And this one also to be equal to D5. And it appears you have to key these in, at least on my computer. I'm not sure what it'll be at work, but D5. Okay. And of course, now when we D, we can, all of a sudden we can now change D5 to me, me more like 4,000 or 4 meters and hit tab generally to go through and hit done. And now each of these holes is moved. All right, so you've gone through that. Next step now is to go and make an assembly before you do solid modeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause, make a new assembly, bring this into an assembly, and then we'll use the stress analysis from there by applying constraints. All right, we're in an assembly, and of course it's going to be odd in scale when I bring this thing in because it's not used to dealing with things in the tens of meters. So I'm going to go ahead and place here. I call that problem 3B. Open, I'm going to place that. That's just the picture. You don't really need that anymore. There's your part. And you're in an assembly now. All right, so that part now is an assembly. The next thing you can do then is you can apply constraints to this. And it can either be a fixed constraint, a linear constraint, or a pin constraint. And pin, more or less, if you remember, when we start talking about rollers and the like, later on you're going to see you can apply a pin constraint. You see this here. This is locked to the earth. Eventually you'll want to change that, I think, when you go into... Uh, stress analysis. We're going to right here go to environments and go to stress analysis. And in stress analysis, we need to create a simulation. Hit OK. And in the end, we're going to immediately need to a couple of things. Assign materials would be a good idea. Right click, assign materials. We can make this for now. Just make it basically something you kind of understand is steel. 40,000 psi more or less 36,000 PSI thereabouts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply a pin constraint at the hole. It knows that one. Hit OK. And I'm going to apply another pin constraint at the hole. Hit OK. And then finally, you see this X, Y, and Z. We're going to apply some loads. We're just going to apply one load for now. You remember the drawing and whatever else. I'm going to pause this here just as I go through and apply loads. Uh, and then pick it up where we do the stress analysis. You have to know the vector components in the i, j, and k of your loads. All right, we've got a thousand newtons placed right there right now. You notice that you had to use the right uh, capital N, small k, n, etc. I've gone ahead and placed one, just one load there. I could space all of my loads and then go through the next process. Remember, these loads are providing both a moment and a, tor and a force. So we're going to go ahead. It's constrained in two places. You can now hit simulate. You're going to run the simulation. 
very often it won't happen correctly the first time because you won't have it constrained in the right number of places but if you think about the holes you've got in your trusses you can do the individual members and then the the, the truss plate as well so that again goes back down to I'm going to hit pause here because it's taking the simulation a while to run because I had, forgot to hit start and that is what the simulation looks like you know obviously we've you know got some problems with the, where we place the force out there the rest of this is fine of course because we just had this force out in the end so that is how you go from us you know a real sketch sketch into inventor and go all the way through stress analysis thanks for listening